All right, YouTube, today we're tackling free fall. So we're gonna have our little Lego guy dropping a ball from rest off a 15 meter high cliff. So we're gonna graph the position, velocity, and acceleration of this ball as it falls, and then use those graphs along with the kinematic equations to solve for the total time as well as the final velocity of the ball once it's fallen 15 meters. Now, anytime we're dealing with free fall, I find it's easiest to say that the upward direction is positive. And I'll show you how that comes into play later on. So first, setting up our position, velocity, and acceleration graphs. First, let's talk about acceleration. Now we say an object is in free fall if it's only under the influence of gravity, with nothing else acting on it. So on Earth, any object in free fall will always accelerate downward at roughly 9.8 meters per second squared. And on our graph, this looks like a steady line with a height of negative 9.8. And the reason the acceleration is negative is because we said upward was the positive direction. Realize, this is the acceleration graph for all objects in free fall. Now moving on to velocity. We know the ball is going to start at rest. And as it moves downward, it's going to speed up or accelerate. Now because the ball is going to be moving downward, we'll see the velocity become increasingly negative. So on our graph, we'll see a diagonal line that's trending downward. And it has a slope of negative 9.8 meters per second per second. Now moving on to position. Now it doesn't matter where we choose to call a height of zero, but I find the lowest point in the problem is typically the easiest. Now the graph of position versus time is a parabola. And that's because the slope of a position versus time graph is equal to the instantaneous velocity of that object. So as the ball moves downward and speeds up, it's going to move farther and farther every second meaning we'll see the position graph become steeper and steeper. Now we're trying to solve for the total time the ball spends falling, as well as the final velocity of the ball. The time shows up on each of the graphs. The final velocity shows up right here on our velocity graph. Now remember, there's a kinematic equation that goes with both the position graph and another that goes with the velocity graph. And we can use those equations as well as the information given to us in the problem to solve for that total time as well as the final velocity. Now when you get to free fall, some people will write this position equation using y's instead of x's. And other times people will just write it as a displacement equation, where displacement is the change in position. But first, let's solve for the total time this ball is going to spend falling. So laying out our five kinematic variables. The ball is going to start at a height of 15 meters and finish at a height of zero. So doing our final position minus our initial position at zero minus 15, we get a displacement of negative 15. The ball starts at a velocity of zero, so VI is zero. And because this ball is in free fall, it's going to accelerate downward at 9.8, or 9.81 if you got that kind of professor, meters per second squared. Now we're trying to solve for the time. And since we know three of these variables, we can solve for the other two. So I'll use our displacement equation. So negative 15 is equal to 0 t plus 1 half a t squared. So rearranging this equation and doing a little bit of algebra, we get the total time the ball is in free fall is 1.749 seconds. And kids, I just don't care about sig figs, but you take it as far as you want. Now moving on to the final velocity of the ball as it falls. The ball is still going to fall downward 15 meters, and it's still starting at rest. We're looking for the final velocity, and acceleration is still negative 9.8. Now kids, I know it's tempting to just plug this time in from the first part of the problem and use that in solving for the final velocity. But the catch is, if you get the time wrong, you're also going to get the final velocity wrong. But there's another kinematic equation that's just the combination of these other two kinematic equations. It's vf squared equals vi squared plus 2ad. And you'll see, it doesn't involve the time, which means if we got the first part of the problem wrong, we won't screw up the second part. So plugging in the variables we know into this equation, we can solve for the final velocity. Now your calculator is going to spit out a final velocity of 17.14 meters per second. But you've got to be careful here. You see, you took a square root of a number. And anytime you take the square root of a number, the result could be positive or negative. Let's go back to the beginning here. We said up was positive. So if the ball is moving downward when it lands or gets to the bottom of the cliff, we have to decide whether that result is going to be positive or negative. Downward is negative. 
so the final velocity of the ball is actually negative 17.14 meters per second. So this is how you graph the motion of an object in freefall, as well as solve for the total time and final velocity of an object as it falls off a cliff. And on that note, that's all for now.